expectations or beliefs, I start reading and trying to understand what are those things that we call beliefs. So, we decided to try to define um, what we understand by beliefs because when I start reading different papers of BCK, they all, almost all mention beliefs, but they never say what they understand by, by, by beliefs. So we start trying to see this philosopher, Spanish philosopher, Jose Ortega said, and I think that this is the most beautiful definition that we find. Let's say that beliefs constitute, constitute the base of our lives, the land where things happen. They are, they are where we are living in the and day. That is why we are not often conscious. And I think this is a, the most important part, that we are not conscious about our own beliefs. They are not thought, and instead they are Latin as implication of what we do and think. And I think that this is very important idea because we never think about what we do believe and how we believe in what things. So I start analyze, analyzing the PCK uh, literature and that trying to understand what we do understand by beliefs. And I said, well, beliefs, this is a definition from Kare that she said that our mental representations represent the proposition taken by the believer to be true. So that's those ideas that we really think that are true, and not necessarily are true, but we believe that. And then we thought that beliefs, since our point of view, are those personal constructions that influence attitudes, behaviors, and I can sign up, knowledge. So at the, at the end, this idea that is mentioned by many researchers that beliefs are important. Yes, we think they are important, but at the same time, it's important to define what is our point of view of belief. Because at the same time, we find many, many, many definitions of what beliefs are. So, Taking this idea, yeah, the importance of beliefs, of beliefs in the physical literature, we found this idea of Pamela Rosman, where she said that uh, teacher education has shifted from observable behaviors of teaching skills to teachers' knowledge and beliefs. This is one of the main ideas. And another one comes from Van Riel et al. When he said, when they said that PCK is composed of knowledge and beliefs. So this idea is carried on through the PCK literature, but we never stop and think what what are those things that we call beliefs. So then uh, I have to check this Marcus model because as you have noticed uh, through the first the papers. Almost all of us have taken this model. And in this model, there is an explicitly mention of beliefs, at least in four components. <coughs> knowledge and belief science curriculum, knowledge and belief assessment, knowledge and belief instructional strategies, knowledge and beliefs about students' understanding. In this case, as Pat has already said, orientations are Plenty of beliefs. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So I then I try to, to to understand what do we think about orientations because after reading the paper of Panela Jan and Sandy, I was thinking, well, maybe uh, I disagree. I don't think that orientations are exactly beliefs. I think that orientations are more teaching approaches, no? Um, but these teaching approach, approaches, these teaching learning approaches, uh, depends on different kind of aspects. And in in this way, I was we were thinking about it, and I we think that these approaches depend of teachers' epistemologies related to the teaching process. So, is not 
Well, since my point of view, a teacher that considers himself as constructivist will not use the same approach as that a teacher that is empiricist or positivist. No? So this, this, these different ideas that maybe we are not conscious about it, about that, are really present in the kind of approaches that we take. Then, the teacher's subject matter knowledge that we have already discussed, very long discussed before, and the teacher's personal beliefs related to the subject matter knowledge and the teaching process. So I think that to, when we talk about orientations, we are not talking about just this teacher learning approach if it's, it's angry, if it's didactic, it is a conceptual change. No, I think that behind all these ideas, there are these three. Um, if when I talk to my students, I could say that we have to take a philosophical definition when we have to when we want to teach something because this position this philosophical position define define us and define our way of teaching. So I start thinking about this relationship between BCK and names and uh, these words, these are our personal views. We think that BCK represents personal first represents personal and private knowledge, and at the same time is constructive through beliefs. So this is not just knowledge, this is not just this idea that we have discussed it before, that if subject matter knowledge, you can have knowledge, you content knowledge. I think in all these ideas are, at the same time, beliefs. So when we try to reconstruct my Magnuson idea, but Magnuson model, no? and I said, well, maybe the five uh, components that propose uh, Magnusons are related with the PCK, and at the same time, I related between each other, uh -huh. and at the same time, are really influenced by the subject matter knowledge and pedagogical knowledge. Maybe after the previous discussion, you can say yes or no, or I don't know. No? But um, because we can sustain this with empirical research, we say that our influences by attitudes and emotions. And all this is depends of the teacher's beliefs. So this is more or less our approach. We don't have, we really don't have uh, research on how teachers um, develop their beliefs. But I have found very interesting papers. And uh, one of Antonio's students develops, uh, well, no, use a measure, a tool for measuring beliefs in high school teachers. So they use, but I think that even with the, with these tools that are already uh, in, in the literature, we have to think about if we are really uh, measure this is epistemological beliefs and how this epistemological belief how being classified in between each other. So uh, there is at least two tools I have no. This is the William. Bill and uh, Mark Marek, and the first one used the kind of name that is described by, by Vanessa, and the second authors uh, use this kind of uh, um, draw. Uh, the, the teachers have to draw themselves when they are teaching, and they have to describe what they are doing. So in this idea, for example, we, we have this, that this professor is a teacher center, student center teacher, and he is describing how he helps his students to solve doubts and um, to share ideas with the students and to do different things. But this, I think that this this description and this role doesn't explicitly explain what kind of epistemological beliefs has the teacher. 
So maybe it could be interesting to try to develop a kind of tool that gives us more information about a deeper understanding about the, the beliefs that, had, that the teacher has. So this is a main role. <laughs> and I think I have a lot of time <laughs> because I'm um, this is a reference and thank you.